everybody, Justin Watches Movies here. Yes, new background. I'm in the process of moving. I got this huge shelf with me and I started to put some things on the background just kind of see what it would look like. I'll be moving very soon and but I'm going to try to keep the background the same but I'm just testing to see what this looks like right now. So today we have another tier list for you guys. We have the DreamWorks animated films tier list. This will include the newest film, Abominable. Now I reviewed that for you guys. You can check that out on my channel. But I've got a tier list for all like somewhat 30 animated films from DreamWorks. So we got Amazing, Great, Good, Okay, and Bad. Uh, I kind of got a love-hate relationship with DreamWorks. Um, there's a lot of amazing films, and there's some pretty bad films as well. And there's some okay. Um, most of them will be in the good one. I kind of already did this um, for fun, but there's a lot of them. So we're going to jump right in. And um, I don't think they're in any alphabetical order. They might be, actually. No, Abominable here is at the end. Um, so let's start with uh, Shrek 2. This is the first one right here. Shrek 2 is um, such a good sequel. It manages to still have the charm from the first film by adding new characters as well. Like Puss in Boots, uh, Donkey, and Shrek are still really funny in this film. It's got a good story that continues Shrek's story, but also integrating new things as well. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do it right away. Put them in the amazing section. Uh, I like Shrek too. I think it's a really good sequel. Next, we've got How to Train Your Dragon. How to Train Your Dragon, I think this is the first one, um, was a really surprising sequel. After a like numerous really bad films from DreamWorks, I wasn't anticipating much from How to Train Your Dragon. I remember seeing it in theaters. My mom called me up after work and she said, you want to go see How to Train Your Dragon? I was like, okay, I don't even know what this film is about. Let's go see it. And I absolutely love it. The relationship between Hiccup and Toothless is something really sweet. There's a lot of world building in there which works in this film. The animation is great. Uh, I think How to Train Your Dragon is an amazing film. Easily one of the best animated films I've seen uh, in a long time. So we got two amazings and then we got B-Movie. Oh, B-Movie. B-Movie is such a weird story, a weird concept that about a bee that wants to hook up with a human. Uh, it's just really bad. The jokes do not work. Uh, the animation's fine. The animation's not the problem in here. It's the story and the characters. Uh, B-movie is bad. Uh, so next we got Captain Underpants. I was really looking forward to seeing Captain Underpants because I really enjoy reading the stories when I was a kid. And so I was curious to see how it's going to translate into the big screen. And I think that the voice acting is really good. Um, it manages to be a lot of fun, um, manages to also stay true to the novels as well. I think uh, Captain Underpants is a good film. Next, we got Madagascar 2. Madagascar 2 is not as good as the first Madagascar film. This is the one Escape to Africa, the second film. And while I think the story is it's, it's kind of weak, to be honest, I think that uh, each one of these characters kind of separate and do their own thing. Um, Marty is trying to... Alex, sorry. Alex is trying to get to know his family. Then you have all the other characters doing their own little things. Them being separated makes it not as charming as the first one. And I think uh, Madagascar 2 is an okay film. I do enjoy the Madagascar series, though. Home. Home is another bad... DreamWorks film. It's not funny. It's not charming. It's not heartwarming. The animation's weird. It's just a film that I saw and I like never wanted to see again. It's just bad film. How to Train Your Dragon. This looks like the third film. Um, like I said, I really enjoy the franchise. The franchise is the series of films is really good. Um, I was really impressed with How to Train Your Dragon 3. I think that kind of separating them two um, allowed for each one of them to grow. Whereas Madagascar too, like you liked seeing them together and this, each storyline was really weak. But here in the this one, separating Hiccup and Toothless made each character grow and you understood why you loved them so much and you want to see them together. Um, 
and then you had the uh, Light Fury in here, which was a great addition to the story. Um, the villain was really good as well. Once again, it's just a great amount of world building in here to make me think that How to Train Your Dragon 3 is an amazing film. Um, next, we got Turbo. I think Turbo had a great uh, voice cast. Ryan Reynolds in here is as funny as this snail. And I think uh, Turbo is a funny film. And it's kind of like a fast-paced, always-moving movie. And um, that's enjoyable for a lot of kids. I think the storyline was um, weak at times and very predictable and very generic. But uh, I still thought that Turbo was a good film. It's an enjoyable film. It's not one that's like you never want to watch again. It's one that you thought, oh, that was that was fun. It was good. Um, Megamind. Megamind probably has like the best voice cast out of any of these movies. Uh, Will Ferrell and Brad Pitt is in this movie. And uh, Megamind is just a funny film. Um, I was really excited to see this film just because of Will Ferrell. I remember when it first came out and I was like, I got to see this movie. Will Ferrell's in it. And he's perfect as the villain. And I think they give enough decent amount of backstory to make you care about the character as well. Um, and so Make It Mine uh, took a superhero, like, you know, the kind of typical superhero film and flipped it on its head and told a good story. And so I think uh, Make It Mine here is good. So we got some good films, some amazing films, and some okay and bad films. Crudes. Uh, Crudes was another sweet film. I really enjoyed Crudes. Crudes, um... Has another great great voice cast. DreamWorks in just in general has some really good voice cast. You got Nicolas Cage and Emma Stone in here. Um, I'm blanking on who else is in this movie. I think I want to say Zac Efron, but I'm not sure. I could be wrong. Uh, but Crudes, uh, I I really liked the prehistoric storyline and watching this family um, work together in a way that would be. I guess normal for the prehistoric time. I don't know. Uh, the Kurds was fun. It's uh, it's zany. It reminds me of a kind of like a Saturday morning cartoon. Like there's a lot of uh, gimmicks in the movie. It's very fastly paced. Everybody's kind of like running around doing weird stuff. Um, so Kurds is a good film, and I'm excited to see the sequel for eventually when it does come out. Now Penguins of Madagascar. I have a soft spot for this film. Uh, it was the first movie that my wife and I saw when we first started dating. It was actually our first date. We went um, to Italian restaurant and we went and saw Penguins of Madagascar. And so every December 6th, 19th, 19th, we go see, uh, we watch Penguins of Madagascar. So I saw it in 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017. 2018 and I'm about to see it in 2019 and we watched it when it was on Blu-ray so I've seen this film plenty of times and so it grows on me every single time and I I really enjoy watching it so personal reason I think Penguins of Madagascar is a great film and also besides this personal connection to the movie um, the, one of the favorite things about the Madagascar series was the penguins I thought they were really smart they're witty and they added a lot of jokes to the movie. So I was really excited to see the film and like the personal connection on top of that. I really just enjoy Penguins of Madagascar. Boss Baby. Um, as much as I thought this was a cool idea for a film, this movie just fell flat. It was um, really weird. I didn't know what it wanted to be. It had like retro style animation and then it wanted to have current animation as well. It just, uh, it didn't mix it very well. On top of that, just a constant potty humor jokes. Of course, there's the baby in here, but the storyline was really weird and the animation just did not mix it very well. And it's just a story that I was not interested in as at all. I met the director for this, I talked a little bit, but uh, yeah, I didn't want to tell him I didn't like the movie. Next up, we have Spirited. Um, I saw Spirited when I was younger, and I watched it um, back in February for How to Train Your Dragon, and then again this summer. I still think Spirit, Spirit, I want to say Spirit Away, Spirit is an okay film. I don't find the draw to Spirit for me. I don't like horses and all that stuff, so I mean, I might not have that connection to the movie, but I think... Um, the voice cast in here is good, and um, 
the animation is beautiful to look at. It's just a story that I find kind of boring and flat, but it's an okay film. It's not bad at all. Flushed away, flushed away. I really like the animation in here. Um, them teaming up with Ardman and uh, the humor works in here. Kind of like Crudes. It's a film that's kind of like always going. And so it makes it really enjoyable to watch. Uh, mix that with some really funny humor and, um, you know, potty humor because it's flushed away. But uh, I think Flushed Away is a good film. Uh, it's a film that I remember watching a lot. And when it first came out, I was in middle school. And I thought it was a pretty entertaining film. And I still think Flushed Away is entertaining. Um, so we've seen a trend. We've got some good films and <coughs> some bad films here. Um, this looks like it's uh, Sinbad. Sinbad's an okay film. We'll start off just by saying that um, I like the animation in here and the voice cast is good as well. But it's a story that uh, feels very typical and generic. It's a film that uh, is not really entertaining um, throughout. It tries to be like thrilling and um, like fastly paced, but I just don't think it works. It's a film that, uh, um, is that Sinbad? I can't tell. Yes, yeah, Sinbad. I thought it was El Dorado for a second. Um, I need glasses. Uh, but Sinbad, yes, back to that. It's okay film. Uh, nothing really exciting, nothing memorable about it either. Wallace and Gromit. I really like Wallace and Gromit. I think Wallace and Gromit is a charming story. I really liked um, these two movies, Flushed Away and Wallace and Gromit and the company that DreamWorks teamed up with. Um, so I like the, the claymation in here. It works. It's adorable. Wallace and Gromit. Um, it's just a sweet, sweet story. The sweet characters. You watch Wallace and Gromit and you can't help but have a smile on your face. It's not an amazing film. It's not a bad film. It's a good film. It's a film that I could watch and smile and like it when I'm watching it. Uh, Mr. Peabody and Sherman. This one when I was really looking forward to seeing. I remember anticipating it when it came out in theaters and I think that this film tried to do too much. And I understand the story tries to you know bring different historic figures all together but they did a little too many and so all the scenes just felt really quick and you didn't get to feel attached to any one sequence or one character just because the film was always moving and always transitioning to a new scene and that sucks because I like the idea behind Mr. Peabody and Sherman um, but it just did not translate well on the big screen uh, so I think it's okay film not a bad film Trolls I think Trolls is a good film now a lot of people don't like Trolls I think Trolls is a very colorful film I could watch Trolls and just be amazed by all the bright popping colors but besides that I like the voice cast Anna Kendrick and um, Justin Timberlake in here and the music is upbeat and it's really and it makes the story really enjoyable um, much like these DreamWorks films and with having so many movies coming out just in general with animation films the story does feel very generic but it's filled with adorable characters very bright moments some good music and a lot of great humor as well. So that's why I like Trolls and I'm actually anticipating the next Trolls World Tour. I think it comes out in March next year, but I'm looking forward to seeing that film. And But right now I enjoy Trolls. Uh, Rise of the Guardians. Rise of the Guardians was an interesting concept taking Santa and the Easter Bunny and Sandman, uh, Father Time, I don't know, and uh, Jack Frost. Who else was it? The Tooth Fairy? Yes. I think there was a bunch of characters. That's what I'm getting at. Uh, Rise of the Guardians was an interesting film. I enjoy Rise of the Guardians. It uh, had weirder versions for these um, characters that we've been talked to about as a kid. But uh, I think that it managed to make it work. Uh, kind of like an Avengers style, but for... Um, you know, Santa and the Easter Bunny and whatnot. But I think Rise of the Guardians was thrilling at times. I think it had a nice storyline mixed with, you know, 
a villain that definitely worked in the movie. Um, each character felt good in their own way. It's paired that with the nice voice acting. Um, it's a little bit of a darker kind of film compared to other DreamWorks films. Just looking at this poster, it's like a little bit darker compared to other ones. In terms of the animation, it's a little bit darker compared to other movies, but I think that Rise of the Guardians is a good film and it's a perfect time to watch it around the holidays. Uh, Madagascar 3, Most Wanted. Uh, Madagascar, Madagascar 3 is better than the second Madagascar, not as good as the first Madagascar. Um, this film had some new characters in it just like the second one did. It still managed to be funny, and I really like that the four main characters were together in this movie compared to um, kind of being separated from the second one. So Madagascar 3, um, Most Wanted, is a good film, better than the second one, enjoyable, and I would like to see fourth one eventually. Still got many films to get through. Um, let's get with Shark Tale. Bad. I hate Shark Tale. Shark Tale is my least favorite DreamWorks film. Not funny, not memorable, cringeworthy music, cringeworthy voice acting. It is a terrible story. I hate Shark Tale. Puss in Boots. Puss in Boots is a fun film. I think that it was an acceptable movie to have for a spinoff for a Shrek movie. When you think of Shrek, you think of Shrek and Donkey, so you don't have a separate Donkey movie. You have Puss in Boots in there, so I think that Puss in Boots, you know, earned his own movie. I think Puss in Boots is okay. Uh, Puss in Boots is um, got some funny moments. Zach Galifianakis is in this movie. I remember laughing at all of the cats in the movie and uh, the little things that they do. I thought it was pretty adorable, but uh, Puss in Boots is thrilling and he had his chance to shine. You got to understand him a little more, so you got to love the character throughout this movie. And it's filled with some great action sequences and some fun moments. It's overall enjoyable film. Over the Hedge. I have a really soft spot for Over the Hedge. I constantly watch this movie when it was first released and um, it's got a great voice cast. You're gonna hear me say that a lot, but Steve Corral and Bruce Willis and Wanda Sykes is filled with great talent. Um, but Over the Hedge, I think is a good film. Um, I remember, I think out of like most of these DreamWorks, Movies Over the Hedge is the one I've seen the most. It's the one that I enjoy seeing the little characters, especially Steve Corral's character. Um, the squirrel is my, by far one of my favorite DreamWorks characters. But I like seeing these little woodland creatures trying to get food. And it's just a fun story. Um, there's a side story with uh, Bruce Willis's character and him having to get food to return to a bear. And so there's a little bit that side story going on, but overall I think Over the Hedge is a really zany, fun film. I love watching it. Kung Fu Panda 3, um, it took me years to actually really enjoy the Kung Fu Panda series. I watched Kung Fu Panda so much at a daycare I worked at. They always played it and I was like, I hate Kung Fu Panda. Stop playing this movie. But I eventually, ended up liking Kung Fu Panda. I think that each one is different in its own way, having a separate story. And what I liked the the transition from each film and the progression is that he learns something new in each film. He's just not stopping in the second film because he thinks he's a master now. And in the third film as well, he's learning something new that will help him defeat the villain in the film. Jack Black is perfect as Poe. Um, the other characters, the five other characters are great as well. It's a very enjoyable series. I think that it's really funny. The action sequences flow very nicely. So what I'm gonna actually do is take all three of these Kung Fu Panda movies and put them in the great section. I think Kung Fu Panda is a really enjoyable series and um, I would love to see a fourth film, but right now these three movies really work and I really enjoy them. Um, Let's let's get through some of these other ones. Monsters versus Aliens, okay. It's weird. I think it tries to pay homage to like the 50s and 60s monster movies, but it does it in such a weird way. 
Seth Rogen is funny in the movie. Reese Witherspoon works in the movie. Everybody else is just okay. It's it's a decent watch. Like I said, it's okay. Um, Shrek 4. I think Shrek 4 doesn't work as well as the first two movies. I think it's kind of wore, it's worn out at this point. It tries to do everything that made the first two films work. But I still like seeing Shrek on this movie. Um, it's the least memorable one out of them all. I remember seeing it and then trying so hard to remember what this film was about. And I could not. But <coughs> Shrek 4 is okay. It's not as good as the other ones. Um, How to Train Your Dragon 2. Amazing. The How to Train Your Dragon series and half of the Shrek series is really good. How to Train Your Dragon 2 um, feels bigger than the first film. Great world building. Um, there's a lot at stake. And you get to see the relationship between Toothless and Hiccup grow even more in this film. Before they kind of do their own thing in the third movie. Uh, so... How to Train Your Dragon 2 is like a bittersweet film because it's almost ending with the storyline, but you still get to enjoy them in the movie. I really like uh, the first, I like all three of the How to Train Your Dragon movies. Ants, Ants was their first film and feels a lot like Bugs Life. But, um, I think actually Ants came first. But anyways, Ants is okay. It's nothing memorable at all. Um... Good voice cast, Sylvester Stallone, but it's a film that it takes a lot for me to watch. I remember watching it in February and I was like, this movie is like a drag. It's like hard to get through. I just don't find it really entertaining at all. Madagascar, I love Madagascar, the first one. I remember having like a game on the Xbox and playing that a lot with my younger brother, but Madagascar, uh, the characters are so funny. And the penguins are hilarious. And this movie is just a blast. I think that the first Madagascar movie is easily the best of the three. Next we got the first Shrek film. The first Shrek film is by far the best DreamWorks movie. Um, I think Shrek um, is groundbreaking. It's easily one of the best animated films I have ever seen. Shrek is such a unfriendly character but you still love seeing him on screen and with donkey who is just crazy all the time voiced by eddie murphy he's just so fun to watch and you want to see uh donkey and shrek and get along and they eventually do fiona is great in the movie as well lord farquaad is funny uh, i think that shrek is just it's it's perfect. It's one of the best animated movies I've seen. Um, great music thrown out. Really funny moments. And Shrek is just it's such a likable character, but also not likable at times because he's disgusting and um, not a lot of people like him. But he's such a sweet character and I enjoyed watching Shrek. Got six films left. We're almost done. We'll save Abominable for last. But uh, Shrek... Let's do Shrek 3. I think Shrek 3 is okay. This is um, the film that I noticed like the Shrek series was going downhill. We got Shrek, Shrek 2, and then like Shrek 3. And I just think that Shrek 3 wasn't as good as the first two. Um, just lacked that same charm that the first two had. And that's a bummer. I remember getting this for Christmas um, without seeing it in theaters. And I thought... Ah, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Like, I want to return this as a gift. Like, return it. Take it away from me. Um, but it's okay. Just because it's Shrek. And I like seeing Shrek on the screen. And uh, Justin Timberlake's in here as someone who could rule the castle and whatever. I do remember that there's the, like, the James Bond. I do remember, like, there's the James Bond song, um, Live and Let Die when Fiona's father passes away, the frog. Next we got The Road to El Dorado. The Road to El Dorado is funny, but just feels very generic. Like there's not much to it that's very exciting. Um, they try to change the story a lot, which makes the film kind of frustrating to watch. 
Uh, Prince of Egypt. Every time I see the Prince of Egypt, I just hate myself. My mom got me the Prince of Egypt when I was younger on VHS for Easter and I refused to watch it and it sat there and every time I saw the movie I just felt bad that my mom bought this movie for me and I never watched it and I just looked at it and I was so sad I was like I don't want to watch this movie but my mom bought it for me and I just couldn't bring myself to watch it I don't know why now I'm watching it now Prince of Egypt is a really good film it's a stunning animated film I love how this film looks. It's a really calm, relaxing story that um, has a good message as well. Prince of Egypt um, is a good film and definitely one of the most surprising DreamWorks movies I've seen after years of not wanting to watch it. And my mom bought it for me and just sitting there staring at me, I eventually did watch it. Chicken Run, um, I think is okay. It's weird kind of violent at times but uh yeah it's kind of zany uh I, I don't know I think I heard that they were gonna do another one I don't know I'd be curious but right now it's okay and Joseph I think this is the direct to DVD one direct to home video that um I did not include in my ranking video when I did it for How to Train Your Dragon 3 because it was a direct-to-home video. I don't remember much of Joseph um, when I was younger. It kind of was in the same realm as Prince of Egypt, the religious movies that I really have no interest in watching. But I watch it now, I think it's okay film. And, um, there's nothing terrible about it, but there's nothing amazing about it either. Last film, Abominable. Abominable. Um, really generic story, very cookie cutter, been there, done that, but it's sweet. It's so sweet. Uh, the, the, Ev the character Everest, who's a Yeti, um, was so fun to watch and the relationship between Everest and Yi worked in here and he's Yeti. Everest was a young kid at heart and he was very playful. And so another person that came along brought out the fun in this Yeti, but it's, it's an adorable movie. It was fun to watch, despite the fact that the story felt very familiar, but I think it's a good film. So there you guys have it. My tier list for all the DreamWorks films. They got five amazing films. Now these are really good films, some of the best animated films of all time. They got five great films, a good series in there, Kung Fu Panda, and then two of the Madagascar films. Then you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 good films. But you also have 12 okay films. And then you got 4 bad films. So it's kind of like it's all over the place. A lot of good films, but a lot of okay films and some bad films and some amazing films. DreamWorks has had its up and downs. There's times in DreamWorks' career where... There's some really good films. They got a good run. Then there was times where they had a string of really bad films, like back to back. And I was like, DreamWorks is a joke. But then like How to Train a Dragon came along. And I thought that was really good. And um, from there on, like the series, How to Train a Dragon was great. And then you had the Kung Fu Panda that was spread out over some years. But overall, DreamWorks animation has its ups, has its down. It's not Pixar by any means. It's not uh, the Disney animated movies by any means. But uh, it's a decent company that has a lot of movies. We've had two this year. Uh, I know they got one that come out next year and some probably some other ones coming along the way. But there you guys have it. My tier list for all of the DreamWorks movies. Leave your tier list down below. What are the amazing movies? What are the great films? What are the good films? What are the okay films? And what are the bad films? Let me know in the comment section down below. They, thank you guys for checking out this very long video. I had fun and I hope you guys enjoy the new set. Like I said, I'll be moving um, starting on the 5th to the 12th. I'll be moving and I would like to keep this kind of set up the same. But this very large cube shelf will be here and um, will be in a garage for me to film my videos because uh, we got another baby coming on the way and um, we need the space and so I'm going to go out into the garage and um, 
my two-year-old will have her own bedroom and yeah it'll be a great time so looking forward to that uh so there you guys have it my tier list make sure to subscribe button down below my name is just watch movies and you guys stay classy